Hello everyone, today we are going to talk a little bit more about some of the different things that you can do in pyrography. This is going to be kind of a, uh, a how-to, and I wanted to go over some stuff. I was recently watching online some different tutorials, some from some uh, close friends of mine, and it struck me that certain things that you can do in pyrography that uh, uh, you know, everybody adopts their own method, and maybe I have a little bit of something that might make it a little bit easier for those people that are using those methods. Uh, anyway, um, I appreciate you uh, joining me for this little uh, uh, episode as we go on and explore a little bit about techniques and what to do and how to do them and, and a few what not to do. And I'm also going to talk to people who own the Versatool about some of the different tips and the things that you can do with those tips. So without any further ado, we'll get started with the video. Thank you. First thing I wanted to cover a little bit, like I said, um, I was watching uh, some videos last night, some uh, YouTube videos, from some of the different people online who were doing um, <coughs> various different pyrographic techniques. And, uh, you know, I saw one of my friends, one of my newer friends, who is a phenomenal pyrographer. I mean, just an absolutely gifted person really knows what she's doing and, and is just absolutely terrific pyrographer. And I'm always intrigued when I see other people's techniques. What are they doing? How are they doing it? You know, I mean, uh, as an artist, I'm always inspired by other artists, but I'm also always curious about what they do. And I, I had the fortune to stumble across one of her videos uh, the other night, and um, it was interesting because what she prefers to do is wood burn with what is called a shader tip. And the shaders are used for, as the name suggests, for shading. I'm going to show you a couple different shader tips. And um, I'm going to kind of go over some things about the shader tip that's uh, maybe some interesting side notes on them because they're really actually a, a very versatile tip. And, and I didn't realize just how much. Uh, effects that she was getting out of them, and I was pretty impressed. Now, to talk to you a little bit about these tips, I'm going to also share with you what I do and, and, and my own tips and points and how I'm working this. But basically, what I've got that I use all the time and, and that I'm a huge advocate of is a universal tip. I'm hoping that's nicely in focus, perhaps. The universal tip doesn't come like this. When you first get your universal tip, um, it is a very sharp wedge. And I don't know if I'm going to try to put it against a contrast area of the line so you can see that, but um, basically it's a very, very sharp wedge. This is not on right now, so I can lay it here. Um, this is the knife edge of the universal tip. Right down here on the bottom is the, is the heel, what's called the heel of the tip. And this is the point. This is probably the thing I get asked about the most because this is what I do the most. Uh, and it is the huge difference between success and failure uh, when using a universal point. If you use a universal point that's right out of the box, when you try to use this, what happens is, because it's got a chiseled hard edge on the top and the bottom, the tips, what you get is you get uh, a tip that bites into the wood. It, it does little bites and jigs and and yeah, it has a really nice knife edge, and yeah, you can do the shading with the flats, but the tip and the heel and the point really create a lot of problems for people. So what I have done to take care of the heel and the point issue is I have sanded it using what's called a contour sanding sponge or a contour sanding pad. Now, there are different brands of this, but I prefer 3M. 3M actually uses sandpaper that sand has been glued to the pad whereas a lot of them use an abrasive. That's the equivalent of sandpaper, and I'm not real thrilled with those. They don't last very long. And usually when you apply the tip to them, you're burning glue more so than the actual um, abrasive. So using a 3M pad, when you, and you can find those at different retailers, or you can also find them online, places like eBay, and I'm sure Amazon probably carries them too. Um, what I've done is I basically make strokes with the brush or with the uh, with the tip on that pad, and once I have done that on the pad, and you'll see on the pad, the pad looks like this, so everybody can see. This is an old worn pad, but I mean you get a lot of use out of these. Um, basically, what I've done is 
by making strokes into the pad and running them along the edge of that knife blade, what happens is doing that a few strokes on one side and a few strokes on the other and going back and forth, you will basically wind up sculpting or shaping the metal where you take those little sharp edges off that tip and off that heel. Once you've done that, the end result is a universal tip that's like this, where it's rounded. And having that rounded edge, it still retains a point. It still has a heel, but the heel is what's called a soft heel. It's not a hard heel. What happens when you've done that is that allows you to smoothly glide over everything. This point, this tip right now, is how I make all of the little fine hairs, these microscopic hairs that everybody always asks me about. I've got thousands of them on the piece. Well, literally hundreds of thousands. Um, that's how I make it. When I do shaded areas, using the flat and going in small circular motions at a low to medium temperature, that's how I make this. When you ask me about stippling all these little dots, turning it upside down so the heel is pointed up and the tip is pointed down, I can come in and tap it out and that's how I make this. It's a very, very simple thing to do if you want stronger uh, creases like you get over here using a, a, at an angle using the knife edge. That's how you get this. All of these different things, if you want to come in and do this nostril, lifting this up so that only the point edge and a little bit of the flat is, on, is making surface contact, that's how you get this. Now, the reason I mention this is not just because I like this tip and, and I pretty much expound on it in every video. The other reason I mention it is because I watched a friend of mine who was working with what's called a shader tip. Now, this is a shader tip. This is pretty much, uh, these are pretty much standard shader tips. This is a brand new one that's never been used. This one, obviously, I've used. And one thing that you'll notice about the used shader tips, when you use them for a while, it thins down the brass, and what happens is this little, this little edge becomes like a, uh, it becomes kind of like a ski boot, if you will, or a, a sled runner. Um, as you use it for a short time, it softens and the heat softens it, and what you have is this tip starts to point up, and you have to continuously correct that and kind of use pliers or use other tools to kind of push it down and then sand it down after a period of time. It does not retain that shape forever. Now, this is a shader that Walnut Hollow created. I personally hate them. I think that they're really uh, uh, irritating tip. It's probably one of the one of the worst ideas that they've had in a tip, in my opinion. However, that said, I watched a friend of mine who is very talented, uh, a, a very gifted artist, and she was showing a demo on how she uses just the point, she uses this knife edge, and she uses the flat essentially to do the same things I'm doing with the, the universal. The problem is, too, of course, when this mounts to your machine, in order to use the flat, you have to, you know, you can angle it fine like this, but in order to use like the knife edge, for example, she has to hold it at these weird angles and, and the same thing with coming up on the tips and of course as I covered these tips when this thing gets hot start to soften and they start to bend up. The only time that I've ever had any real good use for them is when I modified it. And what I've done when I modified it is basically I removed the little pointed tip that was in the way of everything so that you can't do very great tapered edges and instead what I did was I sanded it down and rounded it and I can take this and actually do this to make leaf impressions I can use this to do overlapping snake scale impressions I can do a lot of things with this and I have played around with this I teach all of these tips to when, I, when I'm teaching classes to students when I'm teaching people how to use the various universal points I teach people how to do all of these different types of tips. However, the only tip I personally ever use is pretty much the universal and with good reason because it's usually the only tip that can do just about everything. This is a detailer point. A lot of people use those too. You can use these for stippling. Uh, they have a tendency over a period of time to bend and also to, to weaken and you have to spend a lot of time re-cleaning them because they'll build up carbon deposits. Um, a different type of detailer point. It's also sold as a detailer point. It doesn't come to quite as strong a taper as this one right here. This is also a detailer tip, but it's it's uh, 
it's a, a soft point, not a, a, a sharp point. You know, it's um, it's kind of a, a dull point, if you will. And so you can still get in detail. You can still draw with it, but it's not quite as as good. And the thing with these detailers is, any time that you have a point that's on the wood, once you hit a grain, let's say this area right here where there's a larger striation and a deeper grain, once you hit that grain area, it'll have a tendency to catch on any larger raised up grains, especially in a wood like this. This is actually kiln dried pine. It's my least favorite of the three woods that I generally work with, my first being birch, my second being uh, uh, basewood, and my third being pine. In a pinch on the fourth, I guess maple would be the fourth, but maple is really in my opinion, down below pine, or right up there with pine. Anyway, <coughs> so we've covered a couple of the different tips. If you look in your kits, you'll also find things like um, a calligraphy point uh, and a flow point, for example. Um, and I'll just show you those real briefly because I do teach them. I teach people how to use these, <coughs> though I don't use them personally. The flow point is basically a rounded point. If you look at it, it's almost like a little bullet. And the purpose of the flow point is actually for writing and for making lines. You can make a continuous line with this because it is rounded and it doesn't bite. Remember we talked just a moment ago about the detailer biting into, um, <coughs> excuse me, biting into wood uh, or into grains. You won't get that with the detail or with the flow point. The flow point literally flows over wood. It doesn't catch, it isn't abrasive because it's a rounded, tip. The problem is it makes a big bold line for the most part. You can't really do a, a super fine line with these. It's going to have a tendency to burn. It's very difficult to do a, a fine line with a flow point. This is a calligraphy tip. The calligraphy tip uh, is tapers in a little bit and then it's got a little chiseled flat on either side. If you are doing calligraphy and you are doing, for example, Old English or Gothic text or anything like that, or you're doing any of the other types of, um, of calligraphy work where you have um, where you have large uh, you know, or any kind of lettering that you're doing. These are great, and and obviously you can do things with these that you can't do with any other points. In fact, both of these points you can do things with that you can't do with other points. So they are an interesting point, but they're not anything that I ever use for artwork. So. That's basically it. The other thing that you'll sometimes run across is people working with stencil cutters. And I think a lot of people mistakenly think that they can do wood burning with these and they actually try them and the tips bend out very quickly. This has a hair fine tip, so a lot of people are thinking, oh yeah, I'll just heat it up and I'll, I'll do my thing. Again, like the shader tip, when you're working with such a small area of brass, when the metal heats up, it gets softer. And more pliable. Once it gets softer and more pliable, it actually uh, becomes a problem to work with and it, it will bend up very, very easily. This tip is made to be used at a very, very low temperature setting to cut plastic for making stencils. That's what it's for. It's not for wood burning. If you're doing any kind of wood burning with it, good luck. You know, I don't know that you can necessarily get a lot out of it, but you know, hey, kudos to you for trying. And lastly, I don't know that they make these anymore. These used to come with the Versa tool. I, I, well, actually, I think they do. There's still a, one brand out there that, of walnut hollow that uses this. This is also a detailer point. It's basically a, a little tiny stylus with a rounded edge, a rounded tip. It's, it's almost like a miniature of the flow point, but a little smaller, so you should be able to get some detailing with it. And that is a... Uh, that's a... Uh, uh, one of the tips that they offer. So you can use those as well. Anyway, that's just to kind of cover some basics. I just wanted to go over that before I get into the actual, um, you know, going over the wood burning itself. So having covered that, we'll get on with the actual burn. <coughs> 